folks, in the mines, the rats weren't the only little critters they had down here back then. Local hardware stores around the area, the same place you buy your explosives, a pick and shovel, maybe a loaf of bread. Some of these stores used to actually raise and sell canaries as well. What you're going to have there is when the mine foreman comes down here in the morning, he'll bring one of those little birds down here in a cage like this. As he walks around, he's going to take that and hold it up high near the ceiling in places. If that bird starts to cough, starts to panic, you know you have methane gas present. Very flammable, very dangerous. Also, we're going to take the bird to places, put it down near the floor. Down here, if that bird acts a little stranger, in some cases falls off that perch, you know you have black damp, which is basically air without oxygen. Now, neither one was very good for the canary, but it was better the canary than the miner. <clears throat> the drawing over here, guys, that shows the ride you took coming down through the rock tunnel. All the different veins of coal were passing through along the way. This one here, of course, is the mammoth where we stopped in the ride in. Now, if that drawing was large enough to show us some trailing two miles north of here, on the other side of the drawing, you'd have basically a mirror image. When the veins of coal return back to the surface up there, they're going to fall back in the opposite order, and they're also going to be lying over in the opposite pitch as well. This guy right here, when he came down to work, he comes down to do this job for about $1.75 a day. That was the average going rate. Down along the rock tunnel, climb up the manway, get in here and shore it up with all that lumber and timber, Drill a series of holes in the face of coal and pack those explosives. Once he lights that fuse, he has about three or four minutes to get to a safe place. He's going to climb down below, go out to the far end of the nearest heading and wait there for the blast to go off and the dust to settle down. Once it does, he's going to climb back up here and start the same process all over again. Now I mentioned over in the seven foot, as these guys worked up in that chute, they put a battery door in place and left all the loose coal fill up as they worked. The reason they don't drain it out right away, folks, when you work on the extreme pitch these veins are lying on, if you drain your loose coal out too soon, you're going to have nothing left to stand on the work. That bottom rock right there is going to be very wet and very slippery the whole time. I also mentioned there was nothing man could put in here that can actually hold this mountain up above our heads. What holds it up today, folks? As the miners go into a vein of coal, they don't rob the entire thing out from one end to the other. They're going to stagger like you see here. Leave about 30 feet, mine 30 feet, and keep working that way. They call this box and shoot mining, and what they left behind are the pillars of coal. Those pillars are exactly what holds this mountain up above our heads today. Now, once these guys either dig themselves out to the surface, or they get up far enough there's no more coal left above them, they aren't done yet. The company they worked for, they knew they left these pillars of coal behind, they knew there was still a fortune to be had by taking them out of here. So at this time, they're going to begin what was considered by many the most dangerous job in the the most dangerous job in the mine, and they call this robbing the pillars. Now, even though it's more dangerous than the average day, that guy over there, he's actually going to volunteer to be on the crew that does this job. The reason for that, the company's going to offer an incentive. They're going to pay about 25 cents more a day to anyone who's willing to come back in and do this dangerous job. Back in, they go up along the empty chute. They start drilling at angles up in the tops of those pillars, blast that coal loose, send it down through. No battery door in place, they let the coal flow out, the other guys load it to a buggy and send it outside right away. The reason they're not filling the chutes like they did before, the problem here is once you start taking that main support system away, it's only a matter of time. You can never really tell when or if the top of the mountain was going to collapse above you. That is the process that most lives are lost in mining, however there are no deaths directly related to mining within this one here. The only deaths associated with this mine are the guys that died from black lung disease. Over this way please.